In this video, we'll talk about doing page setup in the layout. So we'll basically start with sample drawing. We'll add a couple of viewports, then we'll set the proper scale in those viewports. And we'll also talk about placing objects properly in a viewport, locking the viewports, adding fields that represent the scale and a lot more. So let's begin. So I'll start with this sample drawing where I have inches as the unit and I've got a few dimensions here. So these are in decimal, but still they're in inches. So 390.6 inches, 56 inches and 147.6 inches and so on. Now let's switch to layout. So for that, I'll click on this layout and now we are in the layout view where we don't know the exact size of this paper or anything else. So we'll start by doing that. We'll just do the page setup first and for that I'll go to this layout tab and I'll click on this page setup. Now in this page setup simply click on modify once you have that layout one selected and click OK if any kind of prompt shows up. Now the first setting here is plotter. So select the plotter which you want to use. You can use a physical plotter if you want your drawing on a sheet of paper or any of the virtual plotters like DWG to PDF if you want your output in PDF format. This is the one which I'll select for this example. Now the second thing is paper size. So paper size is NCA 11 by 8.5 inches, which is the landscape paper size of NCA. And I'll keep this paper size selected. But if you want to select any other paper size, just feel free to select it from this list. Then we have plot area where I'll select layout and this will ensure that everything inside the layout is plotted. Then we have plot scale where use a scale of 1 is to 1 so make sure you have 1 is to 1 scale selected here and also make sure the same unit which is the unit of your drawing is selected here so I've got inches for this, for this drawing unit so I'll just make sure inches is selected here as well now we have this plot style table and this will actually ensure that your drawing is plotted with a kind of quality preset you can say so when you select acat.ctb your drawing will be plotted in color and that's just a color plot style table. Then we have fill patterns where the patterns will be filled with solid color. Then we have grayscale and monochrome, which basically prints your drawing in black and white with slight differences. Then we have screening values, which will plot your drawing again with a bit of transparency added to it. So these are some of the options that you can select. For this example, I'll select acad.ctb. Also, if you want to use these plot styles in your layout, which we definitely want to use it, then make sure plot with plot style is selected. Also, you can check this box, display plot style. Now, if you have transparency and line weights in your drawing, then make sure these two are also checked. And with that, simply click OK and close and we have it. So it's now done. We have the layout. And this is now NCA paper size, which is 11 inches in this side and 8.5 inches here vertically. Also, we have this plotter margin, which is just a margin beyond which nothing will be plotted. So if you add anything in this drawing, which is beyond these margins, those things won't show up on your final plot. So make sure everything is well within this plotter margin. Now, the next thing which I'm going to do here is, well, I'll add the title block. So I've already created a title block of NCA paper size. So I'll add it using insert block command. For that, I'll type I and I'll press enter. Now, here we have a few tabs here. And since I'm using AutoCAD 2020, I have this new interface. If you are using older versions, you'll have a different kind of interface. But no matter what interface you have, you'll have access to these options where you can insert blocks from other drawings. So in this case, I'll just go to other drawing. I'll click on this ellipsis and desktop. And I'll make sure that title block nca.dwg file is selected. I'll click on open. And I've got this here. This is just updated. And now I'll right click and I'll select insert. All right. So I've got this here. And now it's just jumping across different points. That's fine. I'll just place it here. Okay. So it's now added, but we have a problem. The height is, well, it's not what it should be. So we need to fix that. Also, we can just fix this part of the drawing. So for that, I'll simply explode this block. So I'll select it. I'll type X and press enter. That's exploded. I'll go to home, stretch, and I'll make my first stretch frame somewhat like this. Then I'll click here and I'll 
keep moving downwards but as you can see it's just jumping to some random points and that's because of the snap mode which is active in my case so I'll just press F9 function key to deactivate that and now the movement is pretty smooth so now I'll just click here and also I'll do this one more time so I'll go to stretch and this time I'll make a bit bigger kind of window like this and now I'll stretch it towards this side but I'll ensure that everything is inside the plotter margin and there we have it so now this is our title block and we can add the viewports so I'll go to layout and rectangular and I'll add my very first viewport from here to well here okay so we've got this drawing here now double click inside to activate the viewport and the current scale of the viewport will show up right here which is a pretty random number let's use a fixed scale for this so we'll just go to this scale and I'll select a scale of 1 is to 100 and I'm gonna just move my drawing here I just want to place this part of the drawing here so I'll just do that I will just place it here I have the dimension and everything pretty clearly visible now I'll double click outside in a similar way if you want to make other viewports then you can do that as well so I'll go to rectangular again and now I'll just make another viewport from here to here and once again we'll just double click inside and now if you want to just bring any part of the drawing in focus for example in this case we just want to only keep this meeting room here and for that you can either just scroll your mouse wheel or you can also use the zoom tool so in this case I'll just use zoom tool so I'll type Z and enter then I'll select a window and here you can actually make a window and everything inside that window will fit in your viewport that's it so it's now here you can see the dimension and everything double click outside and that's added so I've got two viewports and in both the viewports the scale are different so in this viewport the scale is 1 is 200 and when you select the viewport its scale is going to show up here in case of this viewport well the scale is pretty random but it's still it's a number we have not changed it manually so it's not gonna just show that number so it, it's just a random one but still that's the scale okay now what does this scale actually mean so I'll explain that using this scale which is 1 is 200 which is a lot easier to explain now as you can see the distance from this point to this point is 390.6 inches so from this point to this point is 56 and that's 147.6 which means on actual site if you measure the distance from this wall to this wall it should be 390.6 inches but obviously we are limited by the size of this paper which is 11 inches from this point to this point so in this case what's happening since we used a scale of 1 is 200 AutoCAD just divided this number with 100 the result is 3.906 so this length if you measure on this sheet of paper should be 3.906 instead of well this actual number and 3.906 is obviously small enough to fit on this 11 inch paper so let's check that and to do this I'll first deactivate my object snap and then I'm gonna type di for distance and now I'll check this so I'll just click here and as you can see I'm just doing this randomly because I don't have any snap point so I'll just eyeball this point and I'll click here and the distance is 3.90 which is exactly this value 390.6 so when you divide 390.6 divided by 100 when you divide it by 100 you're gonna get 3.90 which is what we actually got now I asked you to just deactivate object snap because if you keep it active and then measure it it will show you the value which you already have here so if I just measure it from this point to this point this is going to just show you the same number 390.58 obviously I just clicked slightly off this point so that's why the number is slightly off but still that's exactly the same thing so just make sure that when you are measuring things in the layout deactivate this when you're measuring thing inside the viewports or the actual measurement then you can just keep it on now in this case also the scale is this so whatever this value is if you divide this value 56 with this number 0 0.01304664 then you should reach a number which will be the length in model space so well you should just multiply 56 with that scale actually not divide it should be multiplied so 56 multiplied by 0 0.1013 and you'll reach the number which will be the length in the layout 
Now, before we move any further, I just want to mention here that if you want full length AutoCAD courses along with live instructor led monthly classes and Q&A sessions along with peer group, then head over to SourceCAD and join the subscription. The link is in the description and it's also here in the top bar somewhere here. If you don't want to enroll in the courses and just want your voice heard, then click the join button down below and your comments will be highlighted and I'll be able to answer your comments. Also, you'll have exclusive access to monthly live sessions. That's the member only monthly live classes. Now back to the video. Now, if you want to show these scales right inside this viewport, then you can use field for that. And I'll use a field, but before I use that, I'll go to home tab and I'll make some changes in my text style. So my text style is a standard, which is using this txt dot shx font I'm going to use simplex font here so I'll just type s I'll select simplex and for the text height I'll select quarter of an inch so 0.25 apply and close now I just use that size because that's the standard generally which we use so the standard size so now I'm going to be using that and I'll type field f i e l d for field and press enter now in the field category select objects in the field name object in the object type well you need to specify which kind of object you want to select so I'll just select this viewport boundary and we want to select scale so I'll go to custom scale and use a scale name okay that's the scale I'll click here and now it will automatically add the scale of this viewport which is 1 is 200 I'll repeat the process so I'll just press enter objects object I'll click here and I'll select this viewport custom scale use a scale name that's this okay and that's the scale of this now since we are adding this value using field if we later on decide to update any of these values inside this viewport the field will automatically update what I mean is this if I double click inside this and uh, if I just let's say update this like if I make it 1 is to 50 then well I'll just move it maybe like this then this should automatically update so I'll just double click outside but make sure you don't accidentally zoom in or zoom out because if you do the scale will automatically change so I'll once again double click inside and I'll just change it to 1 is to 50 and there it is now I'll double click outside and the scale did not change that's because you need to regenerate your view or your drawing so just type re for regenerate press enter and the scale will automatically update now in order to prevent changing the scale accidentally you need to lock this viewport to do that just select the viewport then right click and go to properties and in the miscellaneous section we have this display locked just make sure yes is selected here now that's one of the methods but there is an easier way of doing this as well and that's right here on the status bar so we have a padlock icon you can just toggle it on or off to just lock or unlock the viewport and once you lock a viewport if you double click inside you will be able to activate the model space but even when you pan or zoom in or zoom out it won't change the scale the scale will remain locked at 1 is to 50 so that's a great thing if you want to just lock your viewport now I'll just close the properties and that's what we have here that's our layout now finally if you want to plot this just go to this plot option and we have all of these settings and just you need to click on OK it will plot your drawing in PDF format but before I do that let me show you some plot styles so ACAD.CTB is selected and now if I click on preview I'm going to get this which is exactly what we see here in the drawing area so the gray background won't show up in your final plot so that's only for representation purposes here and that only shows here in your drawing area not on the plot now the next thing is well grayscale so grayscale will show your drawing something like this so it's black and white but the transparency of the color is also retained so what I mean is this so if you look at this one so this is kind of like 
uh, made with a dull color like yellow or maybe uh, green or something like that so that's why it's a bit transparent but with the darker colors things which are made with red or some other colors that's gonna show pretty dark so as you can see it's close to yellow then these are green colored object so they'll just appear dull also if you just change it to monochrome that kind of color transparency won't be retained and everything will be in true black and white so everything is in true black and white so obviously we have few objects here like this carpet uh, text which is still in, not in black and white but that's for some other reason so I'll just press escape key now let's just check the screening value so I'll just add a screening of 25% and now your drawing will look pretty dull something like this so that's the screening value and if you want to just use any of these settings just feel free to use it but in this case I'll select acad.ctb and I'll click on OK I'll specify a location for this file and save and here is the final plot so this is what we are going to get as a final output and that's all about doing page setup in the layout or paper space of AutoCAD